So good morning, good afternoon, uh, everybody. Uh, welcome to uh, this continual webinar, uh, the first in our new series of webinars. Um, my name is MC Brown. I am a VP of products. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's my role here to, uh, to to tell you what's going on. Today's presentation is about multi-site, multi-master done right. Just a, um, a, a couple of uh, kind of administration notes uh, b before we get started. So uh, first and foremost, uh, this presentation is being recorded. It will be made available uh, as soon as we can uh, after this is finished. If you want to go back and uh, watch it again, uh, you want to go back and, and, uh, and uh, you know, just refresh yourself on, on any of the elements, that's fine. Uh, we've also made a handout of, the, of today's slides available. So if you want to go and have a look at that, you are more than welcome. Uh, I also invite you to uh, ask any questions that you want uh, throughout the session. Um, I am going to do my best to uh, answer as many questions as I can. I may not do it during the presentation, but I will certainly try and do it during the end. Uh, I also have my associate uh, on the call and uh, Eric, and uh, he may answer questions as well while we're going through. <clears throat> All of those questions, just like the recording, uh, will obviously be collected up and we'll post them up uh, after this webinar is over, uh, just so that everybody can, uh, can can fill themselves in on the content. So with those two uh, little pieces of administration out of the way, uh, let's go ahead and get started. So um, as I said, today uh, I'm here to talk about uh, multi-master multi and, uh, and how to do it right. And, uh, the, the thing I would like to uh, impress upon everybody is the biggest problem with doing multi-site multi-master for MySQL correctly is you've got to have a very good solid base to begin with, right? Let's take, just for the moment, let's take the multi-site elements out of the question uh, because uh, we'll return to those uh, later in this presentation. But for now, let's just concentrate on what we mean uh, by real genuine uh, MySQL clustering uh, for high availability and disaster recovery in a real scenario because it's only on that basis that we can go ahead and, and compare that and have a look at um, uh, how that happens when we spread it out into a multi-site environment. So fundamentally the dream of a, um, of a, a proper MySQL clustered environment, right? You want multiple Actis database servers, you want identical data across all of them, and you want to be able to hit these these particular things. The key ones really are, are high performance and high availability. And those are not as obvious as they sound, right? Okay, high performance, we want to be able to get data into the cluster as quickly as possible. We also want to get the data out of the cluster as quickly as possible. Now, typically a MySQL uh, scenario, you know, we could be working in a situation with multiple database servers and we want to have multiple uh, client applications talking to those different servers. And we want to make use of the fact that we've got that, that that distributed uh, model uh, of multiple servers. When it comes to high availability, obviously we don't want things to to, to stop when they're all uh, when something happens. You know, single server goes down. We want to be able to continue uh, querying and using a cluster without any interruption and without a heavy load on our application servers uh, in terms of trying to make that work. We also want to try and make this uh, this whole thing as transparent as possible, right? We want to be able to read and write to those servers within the cluster. Uh, and we want to do it without having to change, make changes to our application. That's key again, right? We we have to get that right um, because if we've got to start making changes to our to our application, it confuses everything. Not only does it make the the application more complicated, but it also means it's ultimately going to be way more complicated uh, in order to expand this uh, to to multiple applications. You don't want to have to be changing them. And finally, uh, and again, this should hopefully be a, a, an obvious element here. We want to make sure that all of these updates that, that we make into the cluster are propagated across all of the services as quickly as possible. It is no good having a situation where you know you make a change and, we, and we're waiting a second, so even even half a second for that data to make it over to the other side. It's got to be there instantaneously. Now, there's a bunch of other things that I could mention here, a bunch of other features. I mean, obviously there are things like zero downtime, uh, you know, effective um, uh, management of the whole system. I think those are secondary to these top four goals. Now, obviously, uh, a, a lot today, uh, there is a lot of talk of, you know, synchronous multi-master clusters, um, and they're all designed to deliver this dream of exactly what I've described, right? Able to write uh, to to any node within that cluster because, uh, you know, they're multi-master, we can write to any of them, and equally, we can read from any of them. 
uh, uh, most importantly, you know, all of that data is all replicated around, and we know that that data is all being copied to all of those, uh, all of the different nodes in the cluster because of the, the nature of the synchronous writes when it comes to writing the database down. The problem is, is, is that despite that promise, uh, there are lots of problems uh, with uh, synchronous multi-master. And probably the key one uh, that most people find, even within the confines of a, of, a, of a cluster at a single site, is slow writes due to the synchronous messaging. Now, whether you're writing and you've configured your cluster so that you want you know, two copies of the data or three copies of the data, five copies of the data, you've got to wait for all of those nodes to say, yes, OK, I'm ready, and yes, OK, I've got a copy of the information. And this supremely slows down the overall process. Um, of getting that data out. There's all sorts of other things as well. There are certain operations we can't do. Select for update, for example, doesn't work. Very large transactions have the capability to lock, to lock, the, lock the system up entirely. And you know, it, 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 in case it isn't obvious, you know, having a synchronous system of, of uh, writes into a database cluster, it can be a nightmare in a single site. Imagine what it's like over a one, right? You're talking here where, where we have a situation where uh, you know, you've got a round trip time and your round trip time may not seem large in the big scheme of things, you know, 15 milliseconds, 20 milliseconds, 30 milliseconds, even larger, depending on what, what the speed of your links are. Now apply that to every single transaction that you have to write into the database um, in a synchronous um, multi-master um, over WAN you start to see the, 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 the problems and the cracks appear. These cracks exist within a single site, within a multi-site, uh, they start to become uh, largely unmanageable. So what is the solution for that? Well, <clears throat> uh, Continuant has been around for a long time, um, and uh, we know that uh, a simpler method for achieving this is rather than going for the multiple master model, is to go for a master-slave model and then make that master-slave model as, um, as intelligent as we possibly can so that we get all of that functionality and we get all of those features without those downsides. And believe me, you know, these, these, these problems and, and the issues that people see with a typical master-slave environment, um, they are only a problem if you view it as purely, uh, you know, let's put in master slave and let's worry about it. That is a proper managed cluster and a proper managed environment. Um, a lot of those problems disappear and go away because we can make much more intelligent decisions about how, how stuff operates. So what does that mean? So, <clears throat> you know, a, a good multi-site multi-master deployment starts with proper HA and high performance clustering. Um, we've got to have a system whereby we have a cluster that looks, operates, um, and, and works at the, the, the highest speed possible while still being application independent, um, still being able to handle uh, intelligently, you know, where the data goes, how the data is accessed, how we get access to that information, and overall just the management of the cluster so that we know what's going on, we know what's happening, and we have those automated functionalities. And this is exactly what the basic continuing clustering oper operates, right? Uh, what we have with, with our, our tungsten clustering offering, we have uh, high availability, disaster recovery, and performance scaling, and all of the benefits that I, I've just described is all there, right? We have, uh, on top of those benefits, we have SQL load balancing. We have the ability to distribute information around the cluster, and I'm going to get that in, in, into a bit more detail on that in a minute. And we also have much, much simpler management, um, um, and more importantly, intelligent management of the entire system so that it works together, so that it does exactly what it is designed to do on the TIN uh, without you having to uh, very, very carefully construct um, a system built around, you know, this multiple master uh, uh, solution. You take out those complexities out of the system and you get the high performance um, and, and you get that intelligent HA, uh, those problems that look like an issue for a simple uh, master-slave scenario kind of go out the window. Um, and let's have a look at that, what that actually means. So uh, let's get a, a bigger image of, uh, of the overall architecture um, for how the tungsten clustering works. So. The key underlying element, uh, and I want you to have a look at, uh, you, you know, these uh, these database components here. These are standard MySQL databases, right? So uh, any variety, by the way, we support, uh, you know, Oracle MySQL, we support Pocono, we support MariaDB. Uh, these are standard MySQL instances. 
Now, built around those instances are three separate components that make up the tung tungsten clustering. And I, I'm going to try and describe how those different components work together. The underlying uh, and probably key piece of technology is, is the replicator, right? The replicator is the thing that is replicating the data uh, from the master out to the slaves. So the master is that, that green one uh, in the middle. Slaves are the blue ones on the outside. The replicator is asynchronous. And that means that um, we don't we don't monitor whether the whether the data has reached the target systems. Instead, the replicator is designed to be very, very high performance and it will get the changes and get the data out to those slaves as quickly as possible. You know, our, our largest customer right now, um, uh, they process 285 million transactions every day uh, with the replicator uh, through tungsten clustering. Uh, and they get that data out across to their system very, very quickly. They never, never have any problems. Their latency is is measured in in sub seconds, and uh, and and frequently, you know, we're 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 talking, uh, you know, single and occasionally double digits of milliseconds in terms of getting that stuff across. And they are processing huge amounts of data. The replicator is pushing that stuff out as quickly as we possibly can. We have so many different elements to that replicator, including, you know, we've got parallel apply. Uh, we have the ability to extract the data very, very quickly. We have the ability to do all sorts of other filtering. That's going to be a topic of a, a future webinar. But understand that that replicator is a, um, a, a very high performance method of replicating data between the clusters. Sitting above that, um, and indeed above everything, is kind of the manager. The manager process is, is designed to monitor all elements of the system. So the manager is going to monitor the MySQL databases and understand if the MySQL databases are running. It could do simple things like restart them, uh, shut them down. Obviously, the manager is also ultimately re responsible for communicating and controlling the replicator and making sure that the replicator is doing what it's supposed to. And the... Um, uh, you know, these components work together. Um, uh, the manager is overseeing the replicator and making sure the replicator that is doing its job. And the manager is also understanding uh, the overall topology and architecture of the system. So it knows which units are slaves, which ones are masters. Uh, and ultimately, it knows how to make the decisions about, uh, you know, how to um, how to redistribute that. Uh, we'll we'll look at, have a look at that in a in a little while, but you know the the manager is capable of of switching, so we can change from a, a master and switch one master for another, um, and we can re-coordinate it. And the manager will will control that entire process. Um, now, <coughs> um, uh, while we're here, so uh, a question has just come in. So, uh, where did the replicator run on master or on the slave? So the replicator runs on both the master and the slaves, right? So there is a a replicator running on every MySQL server within the cluster, and that replicator is designed to, to do whatever role it has been given. Obviously, if it's a master, we're going to be extracting data. Uh, if it's a slave, it's going to be applying data. Um, in the event that that configuration changes, maybe we, we switch a master, then obviously those roles change, and, and that the replicator will now be extracting the data out of the binary logs, uh, and the other replicators will be applying it down. Now, <coughs> The glue that holds all of this together in terms of providing the tungsten clustering option up to your application is the tungsten connector. And the role of the tungsten connector is uh, to, um, to control and redirect queries from your clients. So your application stack talks to the connector. The connector talks down to the databases that are underneath. Now, this sounds like a... Um, this sounds like a, a strange way of doing things, but the point is, is that the connector communicates with the manager, and so it knows uh, which are the right nodes in the system. So when your application says, I need to write data, the tungsten connector will redirect that query to do a write um, and send it to the master. When you want to do a read, uh, it will go ahead and, and choose a slave um, or indeed the master if it has to in order to work out where the reads are. And let's have a look at that that process a, 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 a little bit more carefully, because the connector itself is a, is is that that element that turns basic clustering and management of the replication turns it into something that enables the, the whole system to work without your application ever knowing. And I will say now we've had customers who who literally have for a long time had an application that's dealing with a single MySQL server, um, and we've just put a cluster in and and replaced it, and their application has never known the difference. Um, this is the power of the connector. So the, the, 
the real de detail with the with the connector is how it how it responds uh, and, and reacts to uh, queries that need to come into the queries that need to come into the system. And what happens um, in terms of uh, how we start to to uh, redirect and control that information as it flows through the system, and you know the the the, the connector itself has a, a a number of different modes, a number of different configurations. So, you know, before we get into the the, the method of exactly what is going on with the connector when we come to a you know a more serious scenario, um, uh, like a node failure um, or a switch, which is what we're going to have a look in more detail here. Um, you know the the connector can be configured so we can have uh, you know a specific read port we can have a specific write port uh, we can actually go down to uh, full introspection into the um, uh, into the SQL queries that are coming through and uh, the connector can also make other decisions right we, we actually have um, um, uh, a technology that enables us to say has this uh, has this operation that was written on the master been written down to the slave yes it has I can now communicate to the slave when I want to read the data back out again the connector is aware of all of this uh, information and is aware of how to handle it and that means that you know the, the situation you get into typically going back to the start of the presentation about why you would have a, a synchronous system um, the reason you have synchronous is you want to guarantee that the data is over the other side well, if you're managing and monitoring uh, the replication and you're managing and monitoring the way that that data is being flowed uh, through the system and applied um, as it is through a you know tungsten cluster and then the connector, the connector can take you to the to the right node in order to get the information. And its role is primarily to actually try and remove load away from uh, the master so that we can get the data into the, the databases as quickly as possible. It also means that when it comes to let's have a look at a failure. You've got your application. Your application is uh, communicating with the, the tungsten connector. And the tungsten connector is then forwarding those queries onto either the master or the slave based on whatever rules and configuration has been organized. At this point in time, right, everything is, uh, everything is working fine. Um, as far as we know, there is absolutely nothing wrong. So what happens when something serious happens? So let's say the master fails. So the master fails. The management layer that I talked about, the uh, the, the uh, tungsten manager that I described, uh, the tungsten manager um, goes, the MySQL master is down. Okay, I need to do something. So what we do now is we actually we actually do what's called a shun. Right? We've detected that the master is down. We now actually shun this node in the system. And the role of the shun is basically to begin the process of automatically switching that over. <clears throat> From the connector perspective. What the connector does is it stops all incoming connections. Um, so your application is now trying to talk to the connector and the connector is saying, no, I'm unavailable at the moment, <clears throat> which is you know, fairly standard um, um, uh, role for the, how, for the way our application and, the, and, the, and connecting to a database would work. Your application hopefully is going to go and retry um, it, it, um, you know, in a few seconds, a few milliseconds, however you configured it. Um, Meanwhile, behind the scenes, the manager is going away. It's finding the most up-to-date slave um, of all of the systems, and it knows which one is the most up-to-date slave because the replicator is able to make that determination. And so what it does is it now switches um, uh, switches the whole system over. So we've now taken the old master out of the equation. Uh, the manager has switched over, made a, a previous, what was previously slave, now a master. The tungsten connector is now starting to uh, accept uh, connections again uh, uh, from the application servers. So query flow is resumed. Um, and now the manager is able to go away and start reconfiguring, right? It can reconfigures all of the remaining slaves within the cluster back to being slaves talking to the new MySQL master. And then it's up to uh, you know administrators to, to work out and recover the shunt node and bring it back into the cluster and it could just be brought back into the cluster as a slave throughout this time okay your application may have for a very very brief period of time been unable to communicate with the with the the underlying service but it hasn't had to reconfigure it hasn't had to make its own decision about which one it should be talking to because it needs to know which one is the master all of that is hidden um, between uh, behind the connector um, and the manager uh, both of whom know what the structure of the cluster is at all times. So all of this work is being done in order to, to, to realign uh, that process. So bearing in mind those, those very, very simple things, I mean, this is, 
this is a, a very minor part, but I think it's a very important part of the way the tungsten clustering works because it just shows that the whole process is automated. I mean, this kind of thing happens, uh, you know, in, in seconds. Um, and, uh, you know, the actual switch process might take longer because obviously we want to make sure that we do it correctly and we want to make sure we don't get into the situation where the, the, the databases are, are not in sync and they're not uh, aligned with each other, but it's automated, um, right? You never have to do this manually. Um, again, you know, we have customers who, who have been running our clusters and clusters for a long, long time. Um, if something happens, obviously they get a notification about it, but it doesn't stop their application, doesn't stop their, their company running, doesn't stop their operational running. Now, the key thing, going back to the, you know, the topic of this, for multi-site, multi-master, all of everything that I've just described to you, we do exactly that, but we do it across sites. Right, so now we're not just talking about a cluster where uh, we have this, this level of functionality, we have this level of, of redirection. We now have it in a multi-site functionality. Each site is able to have its own master and its own collection of slaves. So each site is, is, is independent from that perspective. Um, and by that, I mean, obviously, if there's a problem in one site, we switch over the master, uh, whatever in that scenario. But we also replicate the data um, asynchronously again uh, between those two uh, clusters at the different sites. And now we have all of that same functionality. Not only do we have it within the sites, but we actually also have it uh, across the sites too, right? So obviously if you ultimately needed to redirect um, uh, and you needed to change your queries, we can handle that through the connector. <coughs> Most importantly, your sites will all stay up to date. And you can do this with a, a, you know, a number of sites as you like. You want to have three nodes or, or uh, three clusters rather, or four clusters all talking to each other, all communicating with each other, um, all on this multi-site, multi-master, uh, we can handle that. You know, in the event that there is ever a problem, uh, you know, so let's say, for example, uh, um, um, you know, you wanted to change the uh, change the architecture, so we're not necessarily doing what what we would class as a, a full multi-site, multi-master, but you wanted what was classed as a, what we class as a composite cluster, which is basically two clusters, um, but in different locations. Uh, we support that one too, right? So you can have replication between those two clusters and in the event of some kind of a problem, Tungsten Connector can sit there and, and uh, redirect a query all the way over to the other cluster um, across your WAN. Again, all um, um, automatic functionality built into part of the system, all with that same management layer, all with that same um, um, control and intelligence uh, throughout the entire system. So um, one other element, I mentioned this earlier, to me, this is really important. I've, I've been in, in the position of obviously having to manage these, uh, these situations. The last thing you want uh, when you have this, this uh, level of functionality in a system, the last thing you want is, is to have to be able to, to deal with any time of maintenance um, and be in a position where you needed to take your entire system down. Again, that's, this clustering uh, helps you and is designed specifically to help you. And the point is that we can do zero downtime maintenance because exactly the method I've just shown you with a failure, we can actually effectively simulate a failure for, for one node, take it out of the, out of the cluster, um, uh, do whatever maintenance is required to it, bring it back in and then repeat the process across the entire cluster. So, um, you know, we've given an example here, upgrade MySQL to the latest version. This is obviously something that everybody does very, very frequently. Um, you know, what you want to be able to do is you want to be able to do it in an, in an intelligent fashion. So what we do is we shun a slave, run the MySQL upgrade, one, run whatever we want to do. We could take the entire machine down at this point and, and, and uh, you know, add more memory to it, add a new disk, whatever needs to be done. Bring uh, the, the node back into the cluster, it will catch up because the replicator knows where replication stopped. Bring the replication uh, uh, back up to date, bring the node back up to date, switch it over um, so that we repeat the process, shun another slave, repeat it when it gets to the master, we force the switch of the master to an existing slave, just as we did with the automatic failure, but now we're, we're forcing it for the purposes of doing it. Now we can upgrade the master. Throughout this time, your application has been communicating with the cluster, never had to take the entire cluster down, never had to take the application down. The whole system is, is working all of the time. And this is, um, 
you know, this is a, a fantastic method of of keeping your system um, um, up and running and uh, keeping your application up, up and running again without you having to do very much. Um, you know, other than obviously managing this uh, this upgrade process and obviously perform the upgrade process, we, we, we don't automate that for you. Uh, you know that everything else is being handled for you, and your application would never know. So, <clears throat> you know, let's give a, a quick benefit summary here of uh, uh, of exactly what we're talking about with multi-site multi-master and with tungsten clustering and our, our asynchronous replication uh, model. Right, so 24/7 um, data access. Hopefully, this is a this is a really really obvious uh, item. But yeah, we have uh, again we have customers who have been running. We have customers who have been running for months, years uh, uh, with our product and have, have um, experienced no downtime um, or downtime in in uh, if something really really serious has happened. Uh, you know, downtime uh, that has been easy to recover from and get set up from. You know. Again, looking back at synchronous uh, uh, clustering, synchronous clustering has all sorts of problems. Resyncing a synchronous cluster and can be a huge problem. Um, and uh, you know, we try and get around that with our with our replicator and the intelligence uh, that, that is built into that. We also do proper SQL load balancing. Whether you want to kind of semi handy it yourself and choose read and write ports, or whether you want to use that, you know, looking in and saying this is an insert. Or, or an update, so I redirect it to the master. We we handle all of those different types. Off the shelf MySQL support, um, whichever MySQL you want to use, community, enterprise, enterprise Bacona, MariaDB, uh, we handle them all. Very, very simple management. Um, uh, you know, very, very simple management. We've got a great command line tool that enables you to go in and, and view what's going on. Uh, multiple data centers, you know, in a multi-site, multi-master solution, you can you can have as many data centers as you would like. Uh, we will handle and, and replicate between them, and we can even make decision about exactly where the connections, uh, uh, where the routing goes. Uh, if you have something specific in mind for that, uh, we can do that. Intelligent proxy and query redirection. I mean, I can't tell you how 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 significant this is. It's not necessarily just about redistributing the queries are, are, are around that ability to to redirect the queries to the right place, or even redirect the queries based on the uh, you know the session uh, information that is being exchanged. Um, you know, full speed performance with very low latency. The replicator is uh, you know uh, been out there a long time. Very mature product, especially designed to be as quick as possible. Um, always as quick as possible. And finally, zero downtime maintenance, which is uh, you know the last eight element that I gave you. Um, you know the ability to upgrade, uh, reconfigure, etc., uh, your system and your cluster, um, without you having to take down the system, without you having to to make any kind of uh, you know serious decision uh, about whether to do something or not. Um, you know we can handle that for you. We can take a slave out. We can even do things like uh, we can configure a slave so that it will only be a backup slave, and we can configure a slave so it, it will only act as a um, you know as a copy of the information. It would never be used in a load balancing situation. Um, if that helps you, <clears throat> so you know hopefully uh, you know I, I know this has been a very very brief webinar. We're trying to get this information out to you as quickly as possible. Obviously, if you you got more questions, right? If you if you want to go and try this out. Please go to our website. You go to the, go to uh, continuum.com. There's actually a link straight on the homepage there that will say download the software. You'll be able to register. You'll be sent the information. Please go and read read the documentation. The, there's full documentation up on the website. I've provided the link here that would actually take you straightly into the multi-site multi-master. Um, if you want a more technical deep dive, you want to talk to us, uh, you want to ask more questions, uh, you want a POC, uh, please contact the sales team. Again, there's a link on the homepage. Uh, please go ahead and do that. Uh, we will be more than happy to help. We are always uh, happy to talk to you. Um, so just before I, I finish up on the admin, um, uh, I see there's a couple more questions that have come in. Um, okay, which replicator takes care of copying the data from the master to save? Is it the applier? No, so the, the replicators work kind of, kind of semi-independently of each other. So there will be a master replicator, and the master replicator will be extracting the data from the MySQL server by reading the bin log. Um, and that communicates the data over a network port to the slave uh, replicators, and the slave replicators apply the data down into the MySQL server. Any replicator can be a, a master or um, um, be a master or a slave. So in the, the case of a you know a, a switch uh, you know a failure like I just described, 
the roles of the replicators will be switched over. The replicators will then start reading the bin log if they're, they're turned into a master, um, and uh, uh, you know we'll reconfigure themselves within the cluster so that they're all operating. In fact, if you actually want to, you want more information about the replicator and and how the replicator works, we do actually have um, uh, a, a new series on the replicator uh, coming out as part of a new training program. Uh, details will be coming along in a minute. Uh, uh, I just about have time for like one more question. Uh, how to scale the writing in a single cluster? Uh, I mean, the way the the way we we scale uh, within a single cluster is fundamentally we um, you add you know more slaves into your system, and the connector will sit there and uh, redirect and spread those queries across the multiple slaves uh, that exist within your cluster. Um, and the, the, the connector will automatically uh, uh, handle that for you. And you can also have multiple connectors, right? You don't just have one connector that handles the whole thing. You can have three or four connectors that are redirecting. They all know the center, they all know the topology of the cluster. They all know where they should be redirecting queries all of the time. Um, and so you can just expand and you can you can keep expanding um, uh, as you need to. We have customers who have uh, you know five, sometimes eight uh, nodes in a single cluster um, to be able to handle that uh, the, the level of reads and writes that they need. Um, that said, there are sometimes cases where you know you might want to expand out uh, maybe to another one. Um, and that's where the multi-site, multi-master clusters come into their own, right? If you really want to take advantage of performance, um, uh, sometimes you can just have two clusters, uh, maybe even at the same site, but still replicating between themselves uh, and still being able to spread out. So uh, I am uh, actually just at time now. So um, uh, just before I leave, I do want to mention this again. We have upcoming training and webinars. We've got a whole new series. Right. Our next training is actually on Tuesday next week, so the 13th of June, 30 minutes, basically, of how the replicator is running. And two weeks after that, we've got a tungsten clustering. You'll be able to learn more about how the clustering is going. And then two weeks, um, uh, well, just like less than two weeks from today, uh, there is going to be a comparison of uh, tungsten clustering against uh, um, uh, in AWS um, uh, against Amazon uh, RDS. Uh, uh, RDS solutions. Um, so there we go. Uh, if you want more information, you want to get in touch, um, you know, please feel free to, to, to get in touch with any of us on here. Uh, we're, we're always happy to, to answer a call. If not, please go to the website, you know, click on the button, contact us. Uh, we will do what we can uh, and we will answer all of your questions. So uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, hopefully this has been uh, short but sweet and has uh, whetted your appetite for more information. Uh, if so, please get in touch. Uh, we'll post up all of the uh, information and everything else uh, after this session. Thank you very much, everybody.